good evening good evening everyone uh, and good morning if you are sorry this part of the country good afternoon good good morning if you are not in this part of the country uh, hello uh, just to talk to you about uh, briefly about our group we are a group of uh, like minded individuals who share a common interest that is uh, wildlife and its conservation we meet on the fifth day of every The purpose of our fellowship group is to create awareness about the importance of wildlife to promote lasting fellowships, friendships, and encourage participants to form fellowship chapters in their respective regions or countries and have exchange programs with each other to witness and explore the wildlife of that region or country while supporting each other's rotary projects. Our fellowship through Rotary Clubs and their uh, Rotary Community allies are working towards taking action for protecting habitats, enhancing the capacity of local communities to support natural resource management and conservation. Today, we have a distinguished conservationist, Mr. Samilan S. Shetty, conservationist and founder, uh, founder of uh, Butterfly Park, Belvai, maker of Life of Butterflies, India's first comprehensive documentary on butterflies. Born in Belvai near Modubidri of Dakshin Kannada district, Mr. Samilan Shetty completed his schooling at Rotary English Medium School, Modubidri. You can see the Rotary connection there. And then in Sri Bhonendra College, Karkala. Born and brought up in a village, the natural instinct to, to conserve wildlife and nature influenced him to develop a special interest for butterflies that grew when he was allotted a project on study of uh, local butterflies by his zoology teacher, Professor Ashok C.H. during his graduation days at Alwas College, Mudubidri. What a lovely day to remember your teacher, uh, Samilan, today being yes. Teacher's Day. Yeah. Yes. And uh, he has been keenly observing these winged beauties and has dedicated himself to conserve them. His passion for butterflies led to the establishment of Butter Butterfly Park in Belvai in the year 2011, the state's first ever private butterfly, butterfly preserve. This park is devoted to educate and create awareness amongst the general public and students about butterflies, making them understand the importance of these little wonderful creatures in our planet. The park inspires people to create and protect natural habitat for butterflies and other wildlife forms, thus motivating them towards conservation. Samilan was working as a lecturer in a hotel management college before he quit in 2015 to pursue his love for butterflies full time. His 100 minutes documentary film, Life of Butterflies, released in 2019, showcases the natural history of butterfly behavior, introducing its audience to the amazing world of these beautiful insects. He was featured in Amazing Indians season three by Times Now as an exceptional eco-savior in 2013 for his work on butterfly conservation. The Butterfly Park at Belvai has also honored by World Book of Records, London, UK in 2018 for hosting awareness programs and conservation activities. He is a two-time TEDx speaker and was awarded the Popular Choice Award in 2020 by Deccan Herald at the Deccan Herald Changemakers 2020 events, event. Friends, I present to you Mr. Samilan Shetty. Samilan, please, uh, it's all yours. We'll have about, you will have about 30 to 35 minutes time. Then uh, we will give some time for our uh, viewers, audience for uh, their question and answers. Uh, once uh, uh, your session is complete, 
in between uh, if you if any one of you feel like asking you any questions please type it in the chat chat box so both will keep track of it and we, we will ask uh, our speaker at the end thank you over to you sandeep thank you sir uh, thank you for the introduction uh, uh, i hope you are able to see the screen out here yes yes samilan yes uh, so um, let me just uh, start right away with the introduction of butterflies and moths uh, these uh, both butterflies and moths uh, they belong to this order called lepidoptera uh, lepi means scales so if you take a section of a wing of a butterfly or a moth and focus it under the compound microscope you will see the arrangement of scales in it uh, so these are the insects which have got scales and they both belong to this order uh the fossils of the butterflies uh dates back more than 200 million years uh, sharing food with the early dinosaurs and uh, the ancestors of butterflies were moths in fact so the butterflies evolved from moths so those that get attracted to light at a home normally are moths uh, but there are some butterflies which might get attracted uh, butterflies are usually diurnal in nature whereas moths are nocturnal in habit Uh, let us know the differences here between butterflies and moths. Of course, uh, they have a lot of similarities. Uh, moths are uh, nocturnal in habit, whereas butterflies are diurnal in nature, as I mentioned earlier. And as far as, as far as the resting position is concerned, uh, if you see a uh, in a lepidop, uh, if you see a butterfly or a moth uh, which uh, is resting, normally moths keep their wings uh, flat against the body in horizontal position and If you see a butterfly doing rest, it uh, keeps the wings uh, vertically folded during rest. But under exceptional cases, there are some butterflies which might keep their wings flat against the body. Uh, one more uh, difference is that moths have a pointed and a feathery antenna, whereas butterfly antenna is club shaped. If you look closely, a butterfly or moth sitting, you can see the uh, antenna there. And if it is pointed, then it's a moth. And if it has got a, a club shape at the tip, then it is a butterfly uh you can see a photo here of one of the all moths uh, you can see the wing in horizontal position this is how it is uh, kept during rest or when it is feeding also uh this is a butterfly and if you look at the antenna uh, you know, of this butterfly in the photo you can see the uh, antenna being uh, club shaped at the tip so this is it is a butterfly this butterfly is gaudibara and it's a female and uh, this is feeding on overripe and jackfruit so butterflies we have an imagination that butterflies uh, come only on nectar in the flowers but they come on variety of fruit stuff they come on uh, overripe and fruits they come on bird droppings mammalian droppings human sweat wet soil patches that are and so there is variety in the fruit of the butterfly sorry samilan i i think are you using a, a microphone or something yeah i'm using the headphone uh, i think it's too close uh, uh, to your uh, no yeah. can you just okay. uh, yeah yeah because the voice is uh, uh, not clear yeah now now yeah i think it's better okay i just switched uh, off the fan the fan on us on actually sorry for that okay oh, oh. No, your words uh, are getting mixed up. That's why, or if you can speak a little slower, that will be great. Okay, okay. Uh, so here, yeah, you are seeing the butterfly called Gaudi Vera, which is sipping a uh, liquid from the overripe and jackfruit. So butterflies come on variety of food stuff. They might come on uh, bird droppings or other droppings of mammals, uh, you know, uh, animals, cats, or uh, they also come upon uh, oozing out blood. They might suck blood from uh from any of the mammals they also come on various plant and tree sap so there is always a variety in the fruit of the butterfly uh, in fact the primitive butterflies weren't feeding on flowers at all uh, because flowers didn't exist when the butterflies were there and they were feeding on other stuff if you look at this photo this is a butterfly called autumn leaf and the, the wings are vertically folded during rest uh, as i mentioned uh, the difference between a butterfly and a moth normally moths keep their wings uh, flat against the body and the butterflies uh, keep their wings vertically folded like what you see in the photo here these are the caterpillars of moths you are you are seeing and uh, they have a lot of hairs on their body you can see 
and they can also cause skin irritation if you accidentally uh, get in touch with these caterpillars. But butterfly caterpillars in that way are completely harmless creatures. They ca cannot cause any kind of skin irritation. So about two, three years back, there was a video circulating, the, uh, the video of a caterpillar of the common baron, which tells that, uh, you know, uh, if this caterpillar stings you, you might die uh, within a few minutes, uh, which was completely false. That was a caterpillar of the common baron, which lives in mango tree. And uh, it was a complete false information that is a completely harmless creature. Uh, here, I'm just uh, highlighting on the life cycle of the butterfly. The first stage is egg, and the second stage is caterpillar. The third stage is uh, pupa. The butterfly pupa is called as chrysalis. And the final stage is the adult. So there are four different stages in the like life cycle of the butterfly. So uh, let me just uh, show you some photos of the early stages also, how, uh, and also the butterfly courtship behavior, as you can see here. Uh, this is a male and uh, female common mormon, a very common butterfly, where uh, you see it's almost universal in distribution. And uh, these uh, common mormon use curry leaf, lime plant, and various other rotation plants to breed. So butterflies are host plant specific creatures. So if you have certain plants in your garden, uh, certain butterflies would get attracted there because they, uh, they'll be completing life cycle in those particular plants or they might be coming to nectar there. So here you're seeing the courtship ritual of the common mormon. The female uh, is uh, with a uh, pinkish and uh, orange spots on the hind wing. As you can see, it is a uh, well, it is, it is, there are three forms in uh, female of the common mormon. This form is known as Romulus and it mimics a butterfly called Crimson Rose, which is poisonous, whereas this is non poisonous. Uh, there are three, uh, there are altogether three forms form Romulus, form Stichus, and form Cyrus in female of the common mormon. So, uh, after courtship, uh, if the courtship is successful, normally the mating takes place and then the female would go in search of the host to lay her eggs. Uh, here is a photo of the Malabar banded solotail uh, laying eggs on Citrus medica. The Malabar banded solotail is a butterfly which is endemic to Western Ghats and it displays a very unique egg laying behavior. There are about 339 species of butterflies found in the Western Ghats. And this butterfly and one more butterfly called Tamil Yuman displays a very unique egg laying behavior. It is known to stack the egg one above the other, forming that unique tower like structure. So uh, after some days, you know, uh, depending on the butterfly, depending on a lot of environmental factors, the caterpillar would normally come out by eating its own eggshell from within. This is how every caterpillar will come out of the egg by eating its own eggshell and creating space for itself. And they would normally uh, completely eat the eggshell after coming out. Uh, this is for two reasons. One reason is that the eggshell is nutritious. Second is that if it is left like that, it can grab the attention of uh, parasitoids or the parasitic wasp or other potential predators. So this is also a way of clearing evidence after the caterpillar comes out. And then the caterpillar would normally feed on the host uh, plant. Uh, you can see one more caterpillar here, which is feeding on the eggshell. That's the first meal. And you can see uh, the caterpillar feeds on the host and then it fully grows. So once it fully grows, uh, it searches a hideout for pupating. Uh, it, need, it needs a safe place to pupate. Uh, this is a caterpillar of the southern birdwing, uh, which is the state butterfly of Karnataka, or what you're seeing in the video. Uh, now you can see once it settles down, it views a silk thread at the anterior end. And at the, sil at the posterior end, there will be a silk pad for the support. And the, uh, the caterpillar skin will rupture at the top dorsal area and a pupa is formed. So the skin ruptures and comes out and the pupa is formed. You can also see the fine threads on that green uh, twig. Uh, the, the fine threads produced by the caterpillar during that, uh, just before the pupation process. And then it becomes a pupa, as you can see, it hangs at the anterior end the, with the silk thread and the posterior the silk pad for the support. And in case of southern birding, it might take about a month for the butterfly to develop and emerge out. So different. Uh, butterflies have a different time span. Some might uh, close within about 10 to 12 days or 10 to 15 days. Some might take about a month. But if the 
butterfly uh, goes dormant it might take uh, like two three months also to close out so emerging out of the pupa or uh, development of the butterfly then that might vary actually the time span required and depending on the species and then the butterfly would uh, normally come out of the pupa uh, a day before the closure uh, you can see there's a color change in the pupa you get to know the butterfly is going to come out next day that is a sign uh, because the eclosion has to be easy the butterfly releases certain liquids to ease out the eclosion and the butterfly moves out and comes out completely of the uh, pupal case and it holds on to the nearby leaf of course the butterfly won't be able to fly immediately after coming out it uh, requires at least about you know two to three, three hours of time depending on the species again depending on the environmental factors and this is a period when the butterfly is vulnerable to attack from predators but fortunately for some of the butterflies they are toxic because they feed on certain plants which are toxic and they imbibe the toxins from the plant and they themselves become toxic uh, so predators like birds don't attack such butterflies they avoid attacking such butterflies so in this case the southern birding male what you're seeing in the photo it's a uh, unpalatable species and is not normally eaten by birds but under exceptional cases there are reports of the bird eating the southern birding but usually it doesn't happen. Uh, just before it takes the first flight, it might put out all the meconium fluid out there and make itself light and then take the first flight of its life. Uh, here in the photo, you're seeing uh, the southern birding male uh, chasing a female in the front there. Uh, so they are good examples for sexual dimorphism. The male and female have a different pattern. So just by looking at the field itself, you can tell whether this is a male or female. Uh, this is a full, uh, this is a um, you know flight shot of both the male and the female. What you're seeing? Uh, this was shot at about uh, uh, shutter speed of about uh, 2000 maybe. So you can actually freeze the butterfly in flight with that shutter speed. Uh, so once again, there are some egg laying shots. Uh, this is a crimson rose laying eggs on Aristolochia indica. This is a poisonous butterfly. Uh, you can see the bright abdomen of the butterfly and the bright color in the wings also is an indication to a predator that it is uh, unpalatable or toxic. And you can see it has laid an egg on Aristolochia indica. So Aristolochia indica is a, a toxic uh, climber. It consists of Aristolochic acids in it. Uh, and it is also known to be carcinogenic. And the, uh, the caterpillar which feeds on the leaf of the Aristolochia imbibes the toxins from the plant and it might retain uh, it during the pupal stage and also during the adult stage. Uh, that which makes the butterfly or pupa or the caterpillar toxic. And the birds normally tend to avoid such butterflies. Uh, this is autumn leaf laying eggs on a plant called Pseudoranthema malabarica. In Canada, uh, we, some of us call it as Nagamallige. So here you can see the photo. Uh, so butterflies uh, display uh, unique egg-laying behavior. I mentioned some of them. Some of them are laid singly. Some of them are laid in batches. I don't know if you can see my cursor moving. Yes, yes, we can. Uh, we can. Okay, you can see the eggs laid singly here. Uh, this, these are the eggs of emigrant. Okay, but if you can see the eggs laid in batch here, these are the eggs of tree spot racello. So by the egg-laying behavior also, like uh, whether it is single, singly laid or by whether it is laid in batch, we can tell of which butterfly it is because uh, different butterflies have different egg-laying behavior. The host here is Senna alata. I told butterflies are host plant specific creatures. The caterpillar has to uh, specifically feed on certain plants. They're so thick, they're so specific that uh, if you remove the caterpillar from their host plant uh, and place it in some other area, it's a death sentence for the caterpillar. Uh, so if you think that if you have, for example, you have curry leaf at your home, you have lime planted at your home, and the caterpillar might be eating those uh, leaf, and uh, you think your uh, plant gets spoiled, and you remove the caterpillar and place it in some other area, it is as good as eating the caterpillar because uh, it, it, you are, uh, you're going to starve it to death because it cannot touch any other plant. And uh, in this is a plant called Senna alata, and it is host for four species of butterflies now common immigrant, mottled immigrant, three spot grass yellow, and common grass yellow. So, when you see this uh, laid in batches, then it is guaranteed that it is those are the eggs of three spot uh, grass yellow. Of course, 
some butterflies lay eggs directly on the host uh, most of them lay directly on the host but some might uh, lay eggs near the host so it becomes a job of the caterpillar to go in search of the host uh, you know because uh, this is done by the female uh, because uh, the parasitoids or the parasitic wasp are usually searching the caterpillars or sorry the usually searching the eggs uh, on the host plant because they will be laying eggs, their eggs on the egg of the butterfly. So this is how they control the butterfly population. But the female uses a technique of laying eggs away from the host. So here you are seeing the yam fly laying eggs on a Dioscoria climber. You can see the curled abdomen and you can see her releasing the egg there on the host plant. The ants are nearby. And uh, let me just also explain you what exactly is happening here. This is a female laying eggs, you can see. Sorry, her laying eggs, right? Yeah. So uh, now what is happening here is the female would normally lay her eggs where there are more ants found. So now uh, in, uh, in case of other butterflies, if you see, they normally tend to avoid ants. But uh, in case of Lycinidae family butterflies, they lay their eggs on the host where there are ants found because uh, the ants are going to protect the egg of these butterfly and also they're not to protect the caterpillar, even the pupa. Uh, there, this is for a reason because uh, the caterpillars of Lycinidae butterflies have honeydew secreting organs in their body and they actually feed the ants with the honeydew secretions. So this is a very interesting mutualistic relationship what you see between the butterflies and ants and the survival rate of the caterpillars of the butterflies or the early stages of the butterflies will be more because the ants are known to protect it from parasitoids, parasitic wasps or other small insect predators because they get the honeydew secretion from the caterpillar. So that's a very interesting symbiotic relationship. What do you see between the ants and the butterflies? Okay. The ants are also known to communicate with the caterpillars. Uh, and the caterpillars might, uh, you know, order the ants and they might work as per the directions, the instructions given by the caterpillar. And the ants also think the caterpillar to be their own larva sometimes. So this is how also some of the caterpillars can fool the ants uh, because the caterpillars of the Lycinidae butterflies sometimes might release pheromones, which are also very similar to the pheromones or chemical signals what is released by the larva of the ants. Uh, here you are seeing some early stages of uh, some interesting species found in Western Ghats. Um, this life cycle was done by Pradeep Nayak uh, from Angdor only. And you can see uh, the eggs of the cruiser butterfly here early, laid on the tendrils of uh, Edenia hondala plant. Edenia hondala is a toxic, uh, uh, a toxic plant, I can say, uh, and uh, uh, this, uh, the tuber is highly toxic. Uh, our ancestors used the tuber of this particular plant to catch fishes because if you cut the tuber and put it in water, normally the fishes would come up to gulp air because there was a uh, gill failure or gills would paralyze when you put the uh, tuber in the water. So it is so toxic and the, this butterfly called cruiser feeds on Edinia hondala and they become unpalatable. They are not normally preferred by birds. There are butterflies like cruiser, Tamil lacing, tawny costa, which are toxic because they feed on these toxic plants. You can see the tiny caterpillars here and this is a fully grown caterpillar hanging and the pupa of the cruiser and these are the freshly closed cruiser. Uh, these, these are the eggs of Malabar banded solotail. And you can see the golden colored caterpillars of the Malabar banded solotail. And also the uh, pre pupal stage pupa of the Malabar banded solotail. Uh, this is clipper, once known to be as a very rare butterfly. Okay, the status uh, given in Butterflies of India book was rare. And now it is, uh, now it is a pretty common butterfly because probably because of the extensive cultivation of its host we cannot conclude of course but uh, that might be the reason a lot of uh, tinosphera cordifolia has been cultivated in Canada we call it as amrita belli so probably that is the reason why the butterfly might have become common uh, this is cited almost every day in the butterfly park and even in any part of the western guards in the foothills if you go you can see this butterfly clipper this butterfly is called as blue mormon this year we have a lot of blue mormon and uh, uh, in the field wherever you go in the foothills of the western guards you'll see many blue mormons now and uh, it breeds on citrus medica in this region one of the preferred hosts of this butterfly uh, the primary host of butterfly i would say 
and this butterfly is also the state butterfly of Maharashtra. It is the third largest butterfly in Western Ghats uh, as far as the wingspan is concerned. So uh, the importance of butterflies in nature is that uh, uh, the first and foremost thing is that they, uh, you know, they form a part of the food web. They become food for predators like birds, praying mantids, robber flies, dragonflies, frogs, lizards. Many arboreal mammals feed upon them. So there are a lot of predators which are dependent on the butterflies for their survival. So that's first importance of butterflies in nature. Second is that they help in pollination. Of course, the bees are the major pollinators, but butterflies, birds, wasps, all these creatures help in pollination. Probably um, there are some trees and plants um, in the wild which might have to be pollinated by the butterflies alone. So in that phase, they might be playing a significant role. Third is that they are bioindicators in nature. Uh, they indicate how rich is our ecological system. Uh, by looking at a butterfly in a forest, you can actually tell the floral diversity of the area because they are host plant specific creatures, as I mentioned earlier. So they are very important pollinators, I mentioned. So here you can see the butterflies uh, are nectaring on Stachita peta, and uh, you can see the students also photographing them. There are Most of them are milkweed butterflies, what you're seeing here. Uh, this butterfly uh, is crimson rose. You saw it laying eggs on Aristolochia indica. In Canada, we call it as Ishwara Baldi, uh, the Aristolochia indica. It is still used as medicine, uh, but uh, some countries have banned Aristolochia indica because uh, it has got carcinogenic materials in it. So here you can see the crimson rose butterfly nectaring on a statue. You can see how brightly this, how bright is this butterfly. So that's an also that that's also an indication to predator that it is toxic. Butterflies share a mutualistic relationship with flowering plants they're associated with because they are going to pollinate the flowers and in return, they get the um, you know, nectar from the flowers. Uh, this is a photo of the same individual, the southern birding on pagoda flats. You can see how beautiful this butterfly is. This is the female southern birding and it is a state butterfly of Karnataka. It is also endemic to South India. So what are the threats for butterflies? Uh, first, and may, first and the major threat for butterflies uh, is habitat destruction. Uh, habitat destruction, uh, you know, uh, if you come to Western Guards, usually we have the foothills uh, and we have a coastal strip of the Western Guards and you have a lot of uh, forest in the coastal strip of the Western Guards and also uh, in the foothills of the Western Guards. And uh, most of these are, uh, most of these have human settlements, they're occupied. And uh, most of us, uh, you know, have this secondary forest, uh, and majority of the trees found in the secondary forest is Opia ponga. Uh, these are uh, the breeding grounds for butterflies, especially during the core southwest monsoon uh, in June, July. So the butterflies start migrating when the pre-monsoon showers uh, fall, and uh, to avoid uh, normally the southwest monsoon. Of course, some of them go to the uh, eastern ghats. They go to the Deccan Plateau. They go to the eastern ghats to avoid southwest monsoon. Uh, but uh, so most also, uh, there are many butterflies which also come to the foothills of the Western Guards or maybe the coastal strip of the Western Guards. And uh, the secondary forest needs to be conserved because uh, they've been using it from many, many years to breed because they cannot uh, thrive very harsh monsoon in the core Western Guards. So conservation of secondary forests is very much important. Conservation of the native flora is important and propagating more native flora would definitely help. So habitat destruction becomes a major threat. The second threat can be the use of pesticides in the field, we use insecticides, herbicides, which can bring down the butterfly population. Forest fire can be one more threat, which can wipe out the butterfly population in an area. So what we can do in order to conserve butterflies is, we'll have to start conserving the natural forest, which already exists in our location. That's very important. Uh, it's not that if you're creating a butterfly habitat, you remove all the native flora and put plants to butterflies. That's not how it is done, actually. Uh, so all native trees, plants, herbs, shrubs, you need to protect. So even if you are uh, putting host on nectar plants or nectar plants, you should, uh, you know, relocate the plants which are already there. You can put them in a row actually, because if you want to observe butterflies in a location, because the butterflies normally don't chain the nectar plants. When they start nectaring on certain plants, they would continue to nectar on the same plant for some time. So this can human interventions can be done, but not much human intervention should be there. Uh, you can leave some area as a buffer zone without human intervention, untouched, so the butterflies can thrive in that area. 
uh, then uh, propagate native fl uh, flora and also propagate more other other native plants uh, and host plants uh, make a list uh, of it and uh, propagate it more uh, you can start documenting the butterflies uh, in your locations and accordingly you can also plan your host plant uh, which can be put in your area so this is how it is done uh, propagating nectar plants uh, the butterfly habitats preparing the checklist planning the list of host plants to be planted so uh, the butterfly park in belvoir was started in the year 2011 and the objective of the park is mainly uh, to educate people about butterflies uh, this is 7.35 acres of land dedicated to butterflies it's completely a private land and uh, this uh, land is mainly used to educate people because just about 7.35 acres of land cannot do conservation only when all of them get involved it's possible so our job our objective our aim is to educate uh, the general public the layman and the uh, students and let them know about the importance of uh, conserving natural forest conserving native flora that that's the main motive so that not only the butterfly population but the entire wildlife population would sustain it's just a natural habitat for butterflies and other wildlife farms and no dome or enclosure is maintained in the butterfly park. Propagation of more native flora is still in progress uh, related to butterflies. Uh, the park is run, being run with a service module and it's not a commercial undertaking. Uh, we have recorded about 154 species of butterflies so far out of the 339 species found in Western Ghats. So these are some of the photos uh, from the aerial chart of the butterfly habitat. So there is about four acres of uh, secondary forest, which is untouched in this area out of the 7.35 acres of land form. So butterflies feed on uh, different uh, uh, food source. They come on nectar, they come on bird droppings, I mentioned, mammalian droppings or human sweat also can attack butterflies. Here, uh, there's a dark blue tiger, which is sipping nectar from uh, Premna serratifolia flowers. In Canada, we call it as Agnimanta. So this is one wild nectar plant which attacks a lot of butterflies. Then you have different species of uh, Stachyterpeta which can attack butterflies. This here is a crimson rose uh, which is uh, nectaring on Stachyterpeta. Uh, we also saw the video of uh, this crimson rose uh, nectaring earlier. Uh, this is a different species of Stachyterpeta that was sinensis actually. Uh, they also come on uh, fruits I mentioned. This is a blue nabob butterfly feeding on uh, overripe and jackfruit. So all these videos are from the butterfly park and uh, you have the gaudy barons feeding on uh, overripe and papaya. So some butterflies don't come upon nectar at all. They come on variety of food stuff. They come on bird droppings. I mentioned fruits, uh, any fruit or dead type butterflies. Normally jackfruit, if you go under the jackfruit tree uh, during the season, you'll see many butterflies near the jackfruit tree. Uh, and they use a proboscis in order to sip the uh, liquid. Proboscis is a natural straw for the butterfly in order to sip any kind of liquid. They have a compound eyes with thousands of lens, external lenses and uh, very sensitive to movement. Of course, they, uh, they cannot see like us. Uh, they got a blood vision, but they're able to detect, uh, you know, movement uh, very quickly. They're very sensitive to movement and they can also see ultraviolet colors. They also get attracted to bird dropping. I mentioned this butterfly is a uh, banded piero, which comes and sits on the bird dropping. And you can see it sitting liquid from the bird dropping. Mainly they need sodium and they get it from bird dropping. So here the butterfly is seen mud puddling. Mud puddling is a social activity seen in butterflies. There are hundreds of, hundreds to thousands of them gathered together in order to sip uh, sodium mainly because sodium is a very necessary diet of the butterfly. It would basically help in a a better reproductive success. Uh, there's a common blue bottle here, which is mud puddling. You can see the proboscis uh, touching the ground and they're sipping liquid and exceeding out the liquid at the same time. A uh, kind of hypermetabolism is seen when the butterfly is mud puddle usually. Uh, this is one of the uh, one of my favorite photos uh, uh, of the Malabar band peacock. You can see it in flight uh, on Clerodendron viscosa flat. See, uh, if you ask how uh, I got inspired uh, to start this butterfly park was it was because of Isaac Chemical's book Butterflies of India, uh, which I bought in, in the year uh, 2010 actually, and uh, uh, I was I was very much fascinated by this butterfly in uh, 2009, uh, 10 and all. I used to uh, 
use my Kodak Z shape digital camera to shoot the Malabar band at Peacock. And I was very much fascinated by this butterfly. I kept waiting for hours for this butterfly in the tree run of Wisconsin patches. And uh, this butterfly is also the logo of the butterfly park. It is endemic to Western Ghats. It was rated as third most beautiful butterfly in India by Winter Blitz, who wrote the field guide on butterflies of Indian region. And it is also the state butterfly of Kerala. So depending on the angle where you see the butterfly, the color of this butterfly might vary. Uh, anything from metallic green to metallic blue. We have some photos from the butterfly park. Then we are going to wind up. Uh, you can see some interesting uh, survival techniques here. The banded uh, royal has got this black tunnel spot and tail -like projection, which gives an appearance of head and an antenna. The real head is here, the real antenna is here. This is just to deceive predators. So some licenses have these adaptations or uh, survival techniques what they use. So these are some of the photos clipped from the butterfly park. Uh, this is predation. So I told butterflies form an important part of the food web. You can see a crab spider, which has got the common visible butterfly. So normally the crab spiders sit near the flag because you know the butterfly would come there to nectar. Here is a, a skittering frog which had caught the common J butterfly. Uh, it was when it was mud puddling. This is a crab spider again, which has caught the great egg fly male. And this is a Jane root spider, which has caught a red Helen butterfly. Red Helen is a pretty huge butterfly. Uh, this is a, a caterpillar of southern birding which have been infected by the parasitoids. Uh, you can see the cocoons of the uh, parasitoid wasp. And uh, you can see here the spider feeding on the eggs of tawny costa. Very unusual. Normally the spiders are known to feed something which is moving, but in this case it was feeding on something which was uh, immobile and uh, that was eggs of tawny costa. So life of butterflies uh, was shot uh, in a four uh, to five years span and it was released in 2019. And it was India's first ever comprehensive documentary on butterflies. It's a one hour 40 minutes film, uh, which showcases the life of the butterflies, uh, which are all, all the footages for this film were shot exclusively from the butterfly park. We have been screening this documentary. Uh, we started during the, uh, during the COVID times, during lockdown, and we have almost completed 20 screenings so far, and it was done free of cost. Uh, so even uh, as far as uh, the awareness program is concerned, uh, we do it free of cost for all the government school uh, kids. And uh, uh, of course we charge for the other visitors who come for maintenance purpose. Uh, it is 80 rupees uh, per person normally and 40 rupees uh, for uh, uh, student groups. And um, also, uh, the season for butterflies starts in the month of June, which will go up till the month of November. And August, September would normally be the peak one for butterflies. So we are working under this Nature Conservation Trust. So this is all about uh, the butterflies and it's about the butterfly park. If you have any uh, questions, you can please ask me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Samilan. And uh, Yeah, please go ahead. So we are working under this So this is all about the, the uh, if anybody has any questions, you can either type them out in the chat box or you can raise your uh, hand and we'll we'll take up the questions one by one. Yeah. Samilan, uh, you can stop sharing. Yeah, thank you. Uh, there's a question in the chat box. Yeah, uh, Anupama would like to know if butterflies migrate, and Dinu would like to know uh, when does migration start. Yeah, uh, if you talk about uh, butterfly migration in this uh, region in the Western Ghats, it usually starts just before the southwest monsoon. Uh, we get pre monsoon showers, and this is what uh, triggers butterfly migration from the core Western Ghats. Uh, towards the eastern guards and they make their return journey usually in October 
and not much is known about butterfly migration in india it is uh, normally the uh, milkweed butterflies which migrate uh, the blue tigers dark blue, uh, blue tigers migrate the crows migrate the common crow the double banded crow uh but uh, there are observations done but there is no proper systematic scientific study being done to track migration route uh, but there are observation there are whatsapp groups which are working on and documenting the butterfly migration butterflies migrate usually to avoid harsh weather uh, of the southwest monsoon and they wait for the rains to come uh, you know come down and then they make return migration the butterflies which migrate which uh, are, are the normally Not the ones which return back. It's their offspring that the progeny return back. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the next question is: uh, Shruti would like to know: Is there any update on the national butterfly? Uh, there was a citizen poll which was conducted for this last year. If there's any update on that. As far as my knowledge is concerned, there's no update as of now. Of course, I think uh, about seven butterflies were shortlisted for the national butterfly of India, and. Uh, uh memorandum was submitted also i guess uh, for the ministry of environment but uh, it's not it does not come into force or uh, no butterfly was declared as a national butterfly yet uh, common jezebel was one of the candidates of the national butterfly hey uh, yes, vikram says lovely thanks samilan uh, is there a resource for figuring the right native plants to grow in a place based on the species uh, of families that are seen there See, there are books, there are literature which you can refer to. If you Google uh, host plant list of the butterflies of Western Ghats, there are some papers which have been published. You can refer uh, to that paper, and also there are books about butterflies uh, written by Dr. Milind Bakri. Butterflies of Western Ghats is a book by Isaac Kemiker, uh, published by Bombay Naturalist Society. So these butterfly books have plant list, host plant list. You can refer to that if you can afford the book, or else you can also. Uh, uh you know take uh, papers uh, which has been published uh, uh, in the scientific journals which have published so you can refer to that and also prepare a host plant list so to prepare a host plant list to be planted in your region you first of all uh, should know the diversity of butterflies in your location so for that you have to document the butterflies which visit your place first and then accordingly plan the host list Okay, a rotarian Sundar Prakash would like to know whether a silkworm or the caterpillar falls in the butterfly family. No, no, the silkworms are of the. Uh, of course, they are. They belong to the order Lepidoptera, but uh, moths actually uh, they belong to uh, a different group. So uh, the, I think it was it is bombyx so bombyx mori which is used for preparing silk thread. So it's not a butterfly. Of course, it's a moth actually. And uh, butterflies don't uh, make cocoon like that of the moths. A uh, moth uh, pupa is called as cocoon, and a butterfly pupa is chrysalis. Okay, one more difference between butterflies and moths. Uh, so, Purna would like to know: Is it fine to rear butterflies? Uh, like some people on uh, social media seem to be uploading. So, See, uh, but rearing butterflies for study purpose one or two, one or two times it's fine, but don't make the practice of rearing butterflies because that is not uh, you don't. It's not how uh, the conservation is done. Conservation happens when you conserve uh, native flora when you conserve forest. So uh, rearing butterflies is not conservation. You need to understand that first. Uh, for study purpose, one or two is fine, and also you need to know which are the scheduled species because you cannot rear a scheduled species. uh you have to uh, also knowledgeable about this one actually and uh, avoid handling butterflies because uh, we might be carrying a lot of uh, bacteria fungus on our hands we might be transferring them to butterfly caterpillars probably uh, we might be infecting probably so uh, you can rear but uh, maybe for study purpose but don't make it a habit of rearing that uh, if you leave it in a plant then uh, a parasitic parasitic pass or parasitoid might attack it or some predator might attack it it has to happen because that is how the butterfly population is also naturally controlled so you are not supposed to intervene with that you are not supposed to intervene and protect the butterflies from predators uh, that has to happen because or else the butterfly might also be overpopulated if you are collecting so many caterpillars or rarely so one or two is fine but don't make a, make a practice of rarely i wouldn't suggest it uh, well, 
Okay, thank you. Uh, Geetanjali would like to ask a question. Geetanjali, please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Samilan. Uh, yeah, what, which is your wish list? I mean, uh, any any butterfly you, which you have not seen and you want to see in the wild? Uh, Kesari Hind is the one butterfly I would like to say, which is not found in South. Kesari Hind, is it? Yes, it is one of the most beautiful butterflies found in the world. Yeah, hi, Samilan. Yeah. The next question is from uh, Dino. Uh, says, I heard butterflies do cannibalism. Is there, uh, do they, does that happen only in one family or all six families? Uh, yeah, caterpillars are involved in cannibalism sometimes. Uh, many a times when there is a shortage of food, uh, uh, you know, uh, if you are, uh, if they are in captivity mostly, Others sometimes they might be feeding, um, even when there's a food shortage, they might uh, feed on a freshly formed pupa uh, of the same species, actually. So this can happen. Cannibalism is seen. Uh, if you take uh, cruiser butterflies, sometimes the caterpillars, uh, which come out first, they feed on their own siblings, uh, the eggs, and kill them and eat them up. So that's true. Cannibalism is found in butterflies. It is seen in solitaire family and also in nymphalidae family. Yeah. Uh, moving on, uh, Dinu also wants to know, will only ape fly caterpillar eat aphids or is there any other species? Uh, as far as my knowledge is concerned, uh, air flies are the carnivorous caterpillars, at least in South India. Uh, they uh, address all of the caterpillars they feed on their host plant, but uh, these uh, air fly caterpillars, uh, they are carnivorous. Next question is from Anupama, who would like to know, is there any butterfly census which is conducted in India? It is uh, mostly the, you know, Kerala uh, government is doing this uh, every year. Uh, uh, the Kerala Forest Department, they conduct, they take volunteers from different parts of the country and they conduct uh, butterfly surveys and the maintain is at least of that. So yeah, even Karnataka has done uh, it uh, re uh, recently, uh, but after that, uh, it was not done. Um, so we actually also uh, here during Beloy Butterfly Meet or some of our what we conducted to the Butterfly Park, uh, we also prepared checklist and uh, you know some of them we have also uh, given to the forest department. We submitted to the forest department. So that has been happening in uh, some uh, in other uh, places also. It's been happening. They've been counting butterflies and maintaining this. The Big Butterfly Month is going on, so there are people who are involved, uh, volunteers. Were involved in counting the butterflies and uh, prepare, you know, maintaining the checklist of the same. Okay, uh, anybody else? Okay, so I have uh, three questions for you. Yes. Uh, the first one I'd like to know uh, how many endemic species of butterflies do we have in India? Okay. And uh, second one is uh, again related to migration. Uh, have any uh, butterflies from other parts of the world been recorded migrating to India? Yeah, and the last question I would answer. Uh, there are painted lady butterflies uh, probably coming all the way from Africa to Middle East to Pakistan and entering India. So it is a, universe, a butterfly which is universal in distribution. The painted lady is a long distance migrant. Of course, it takes uh, several generations to reach and uh, complete the migration for a painted lady. Uh, the second uh, is that I don't, uh, the first question what you asked that endemic, I'm not sure how many endemics uh, we have in India. We need to check for that. But as far as Western Ghats is concerned, I don't have the numbers right now, but I can tell you there are a few endemics like Malabar banded peacock, Malabar banded solotail, Tamil lacewing, uh, Tamil human and uh, Tamil grass dart or uh, the Palni four ring, Nilgiri, uh, Nilgiri grass yellow, uh, so these are few endemics, blue tiger, these are few of the endemics what we have. Uh, then what was the other question you asked for? 
Uh, the third one I wanted to know, is there any species which is, you know, going extinct, which requires any protection or anything like that? Uh, there is nothing as such, actually. Uh, but uh, it is better to conserve their habitat before they are in danger, what I feel. But uh, monarch butterfly was declared as an endangered species recently. Uh, but in India, we don't have any, any species which has been declared as endangered as of now. But Apollo butterflies and all these, you know, they were some of the butterflies were extensively collected earlier. But now we have, after 1972, the Wildlife Protection Act came into force. Butterflies are in protect, legally protected and they are, uh, they are, some of them are in Schedule 1 actually. So that is there, of course, but uh, illegal collection will have, uh, is happening, uh, but uh, it is under control. But uh, that wouldn't affect much, uh, practically speaking. Uh, but of course, uh, color, you know, uh, destruction of the habitat will definitely affect. So we need to educate the locals. We need to educate villagers about butterflies, uh, their post plants, their caterpillars. We need to educate laymen, students, everyone. So uh, then it is possible. But I don't think uh, any butterfly is endangered in the endangered list as of now, um, uh, as far as my knowledge is concerned. All right. Thank you. Uh... Next question is from Sanjay. Uh, Sanjay would like to know, does creating water bodies in gardens or farms, in addition to retention of native species, does that encourage butterfly visits? Uh, of course, uh, uh, yeah. some of the ex experts claim this. So if you're creating water bodies, uh, that would uh, make butterflies remain in the area. And uh, some of the plants like uh, hygrophila and all grows well uh, near to the water bodies actually so those are the host plant of butterflies like pansies you know gray pansy chocolate pansy or lemon pansies so of course creating some uh, small ponds in the area would uh, uh, help in some way to retain the butterfly population all right uh, moving on dino would like to know what are the butterflies which are poisonous for birds i think you've already spoken about this but if you yeah there are butterflies like striped tiger plain tiger you might have heard of uh, calotropis uh, which uh, uh, which is eaten by the plain tiger very common species that is uh, unpalatable uh, the plain tiger striped tiger dark blue tiger blue tiger glassy tiger uh, crimson rose common rose southern bird wing all these are unpalatable species Oh, that's quite a long list. Uh, anybody else? Any other questions? Yeah, Samilan, I just want to uh, uh, want you to speak uh, uh, more about uh, something, little more about your uh, uh, Belvai Park. If we want to visit, how do we come and uh, what uh, is the best time to visit? And how long one uh, needs to stay there to, uh, you know, uh, have a uh, good uh, amount of uh, sighting of these butter butterflies? And uh, is there any accommodation to stay? Can you, if you can briefly tell us before we wind up? Yeah, I see. Uh, let me just brief you about this. So June to November is the season for butterflies. And August, September are usually the peak month for butterflies. So that is why the Belloy butterfly meet is Belloy butterfly meet is conducted normally in September of the whole month. So we have completed one batch now. So there are five more batches to go. So in September every weekend we have a three-day workshop program where butterfly experts from across the nation come, and we have a limit of about twenty participants who participate in this workshop, where there'll be talks, uh, interactions with the experts, and field work. Uh, where you'll be introduced to the world of butterflies, their host plant preferences, all this will be there. It's totally a learning experience. So, or else you can also visit us during the summer work programs, which usually happens in January, February, March. So, we have accommodation facilities available. We have tent stay available. So, people can stay in tents. Uh, we have bathrooms uh, uh, constructed in the butterfly park also uh, for the visitors, for those who are staying and we are doing one day visit also. And this is opting for hotel stay also. We have an option for that. So this is how you can also be a part of all of our events or activities conducted in the butterfly park. You can contact me directly on my number for that. If you just Google butterfly park below my contact number, you'll get the number. And you can contact me and know the details about uh, you know participating in our workshops. 
All right, thank you. Uh, anybody else with any more questions? Uh, yeah, that's it. I think, uh, thank you so much, uh, Samilan. It was a fantastic session. Uh, thanks for taking time out. Uh, I know this is peak season, as you just mentioned. Uh, thank you so much for taking time out for all of us. Uh, I am sure uh, uh, we will be visiting uh, uh, you soon um, uh, to see the park and uh, learn more from you. And uh, uh, right from, you know, you told us the difference uh, between butterflies and moths uh, and also relationship between caterpillars and ants, which we were not aware of, and the relationship between butterflies and uh, flowering plants, that is something, you know, that, that that's a very good learning for all of us. Uh, thank you so much for, uh, once again, on behalf of all, all the uh, members, all of our members. And uh, of course, thank you, uh, Wildlifers, for being here today and joining in this session and making it a grand success. If you have any more uh, information, if you need any more information about uh, the park, or uh, if you would like to visit any time, you can either uh, get in touch directly with uh, Samilan by, you know, he said, uh, you can just Google up for Belvai uh, Park uh, and uh, you can also get in touch with me. I can connect uh, you to uh, Samilan. Uh, anything else? Uh, I think we can stop recording the meeting. Yeah, I think there are also lots of videos about uh, the Belvai Park and Samilan also uh, yes. on YouTube. You can check those out also. Thank you.